we wanted to take some time to talk about how do we step up our game in relation to marketing now. So in terms of marketing, um, there is a, uh, we discussed yesterday this retail revolution going on, these big changes, the, this dramatic change in, in the world, in the industries, and so how do we need to adapt our marketing strategies to appropriately reach all of these people? So basically, where should I be spending my money, my marketing dollars in 2014? we're going to try and give you a better understanding of right now. So the first priority is probably in today's world is an adaptive website. Does how many people know what an adaptive website is? Okay, so an adaptive website basically is a website that is able to uh, appear appropriately on every device. So it self-adapts to know that, okay, well, this is a smartphone, so it needs to look like this. Okay, this is a tablet, so it needs to look like this. And uh, I'll show you this versus this. So in the case of uh, a standard website is going to appear on a telephone to look like that, whereas a mobile website will look like this. An adaptive takes it one step further and knows basically what it is. So if you have a website that is just a standard website and it's going to look like this, here's why that's important. Because smartphones have basically transformed consumer behavior. 83% of people don't leave home without their device, says Google. Uh, they're always on. They're always available to people. 67% of people have used their phones in the last seven days to look something up, to get information. They're part of our daily lives. So by 2004, if more people are accessing the information via mo mobile versus your desktop, and you're still based on a, a desktop mentality, no one's going to be able to read your information. 77% of people have researched products or services on their mobile phone. So here's an example. In Ottawa, uh, Splash Pools, here's their website. So what do we think of that? That's, that's what it looks like on my, um, on my iPhone when I get it. So. Right? Big thumbs down on something like that, because how can you read that? How can you see that? It's, it used to be that let's pack as much information as we possibly can into the website, and that was seen as a good thing. But in today's world, I'm not looking at it on a 27-inch screen anymore. I'm looking at it on here, and I need to know where you are right now and what your prices are, what your specials are. Here's a good example. Congratulations, Mermaid. Um, a, a website that, that adapts to my phone, that allows me to see where these people are, who they are, and gives me a, an understanding that I'm at least in the right industry, with a picture right there. So that was priority one. Number two is content marketing and brand journalism. In today's world, basically, nobody wants to hear about how many awards you've won, um, what, what you've been doing in terms of your store and your pricing and all that. They want to know whether they want to do business with you first and whether it's appropriate, whether you're offering something that's going to meet those expectations. So they want to hear an engaging story to, that's educating them rather than pitching them. You're not, the first thing that, that's, that's visible is no longer the uh, come to us because we've got 10% off. 10% eh, off what? It's, a, it's all relative. So we're trying to educate rather than pitch. So it's a journalism style of story that you want to be telling in today's world. So what does that involve? It's, it's something that's not me-centric. It's what are you going to benefit by coming and talking to me? How can you benefit from that? So here Here's you know, another example on my phone, although I could barely read it. It, it leads off with, um, this is our awards, and this is why we're so wonderful, and this is why you should do business with us. Uh, that's not really helping me today. I am looking for a solution to something. That's not a solution to something. So brand journalism basics. Journalism. The, the people who are doing well in this and who are available in this, who are forming associations, forming companies who do this, are basically former journalists because their newspaper doesn't exist anymore. Right? That's the mentality. You have to think of yourself as somebody sitting on the typewriter years ago thinking of a story. That's the type of thing that, that the priority is in marketing going forth. So what's the W5? Who? Who are the central actors of this piece and what's relevant about them that the audience should identify with? How can I identify with the people who I'm sending this message to? What? What are they doing that matters? When? What makes this timely? Why do I need to act now? Where? 
What is the setting and how does this come alive? Make it interesting, make it something relatable, and why? Why does it matter and why should I care? What did we do for the community? What are we doing uh, to help you? Why, if you come into our store, is it gonna matter? Some people who do this very well is Home Depot, for example. They're not selling you when they teach you how to do something. They're not selling when they give you free seminars to come in and learn how to do something to make your life better. But what are they doing? They're giving you a reason to identify with them, a reason to come into their store and buy something. But they didn't pitch you, they didn't tell you how much it cost, they didn't tell you that they're having a sale now on it, they brought you in because you were there with 15 other people who wanted to learn how to do something. iStores, at the beginning, they are now the most profitable retail business in the world. Why is that? When they first started, they had those uh, genius counters and it was uh, you know nine in the morning and there was nobody in the store yet, so the managers started to let those people stay home a little bit longer. And then one of the bosses came around one time and said, well, why is there no genius here? And they're, well, there's no customers here. And he's like, well, again, car <laughs> horse before the cart. We have to make sure that the genius is there so that when somebody comes in, there's again a reason to be there. And by doing that, providing the people information, providing them with a solution to problems that they have, they have become the most profitable retail business in the world. If you want more information on this, the Content Marketing Institute is a place that you can refer, and if you look at it on your smartphone, it's gonna look like that so you can get your information properly. Um, and it's a good place to go to get a better understanding of what is, uh, what is this phenomenon and how can you apply that to your business. But it is a priority for anything that you're doing in terms of content development that's gonna be digital, it needs to have this kind of a spin because the, the days of just pitching things are gone. So priority number three, digital advertising. Here, for example, um, is a screenshot from uh, one of probably my desktop. And uh, you'll see down here in the corner, I'm sure some of you have seen this before. Once upon a time, I looked online for a pump, and ever since then, every time I open up a browser, poof, there it is. I also use a lot of Airborne, for those of you who travel a lot and know how to survive uh, without uh, getting sick. Uh, that also appears in the corner all the time as well. So why is that important? And how many people do uh, paid advertising online? Ad AdWords, anything like that? A few, okay, but not everybody. So, I mean, Pool Supplies Canada does this extremely well. I mean, literally any time I open up anything, boom, there they are. And so why is that important? Well, one of the reasons that it's important is that Google, again, in, in the, they change their algorithms as to what's important to them. What do they see as what people want? And they did several changes over the summer, May, September, October. They did changes that, that basically, if you were number one, you may have dropped right off of the map because what was seen as important and changed. One of the things that they changed was that it, it was more content centric. So the content has to be something that people want. It has to be interesting. It has to be things that social media points to and says, wow, yeah, that helped me. Wow, that's something that was really interesting to me. Not, oh, that's popular because it's $99. That's popular because it was information, it was original content. It wasn't something that was just copied and pasted from somebody else, it was original content. The second thing that they're doing is they're testing these huge banners, which are paid advertisement that look like this. So basically what ends up happening is that if you used to be on the page and now you're not one of these people that's paying for that banner ad that comes up when, they, when you typed in, for example, in this case, Southwest Airlines, but if I had typed in pools and spas and somebody else has paid for that ad, whew, where are you? You disappear. And if you disappeared off of that first page, you've disappeared, right? If you're not on that first page, you don't exist. So the smartphones is something that helps advertisers connect with their customers as well. So in terms of digital advertising, an ad that is sent to a customer because they signed up for something, they gave you their information and said, yes, please send me this, something like that. 89% of people notice things like that, and they don't just delete it. Well, maybe they delete it, but they've read it before they deleted it. So that is the kind of thing that I know in this industry, oh, I don't want to ask them for their email address, oh, I don't want to ask them to sign up for this, but if they've asked for this information and they receive something from you, that's the kind of thing that they're noticing, because everything else is just noise to them now. 
because as you see, everybody is sending them something and, and uh, the mail and everything else just isn't a message that gets through. So this is a priority for the uh, years ahead. And now the fourth priority is something that, uh, uh, how many people have Wi-Fi in their stores available to their customers? Yeah, uh, one, two, three, excellent. So why is that uh, a priority? Well, 77% of smartphone users research while they're in the store and they actually buy that item after researching it in the store. So you know how we talked about showrooming and how people go in and look at the price and perhaps go somewhere else? Well, maybe that's because you were operating in the level of tolerance and you weren't meeting their expectations. So it wasn't just on price because other surveys that say 77% of people who searched it online while in the store went to the cash and gave you their money. So allowing access to outside information while in the store will basically increase your sales and increase your loyalty. So what I'm asking you to do is go back to the old days, it's gonna sound funny, by giving them Wi-Fi. Because what does that do? Well, just like the old days, It'll create a connected community, just like it was in the old days, sharing news, advice, it's people talking to each other, it's people getting social advice from their friends while they're buying this, going and seeing that, oh wow, so-and-so, uh, who's my doctor, uh, is on your Facebook page and likes you as a service, and he bought one of these pumps and he loves it. <gasps> wow, I'm gonna buy this pump from you. It's creating a community that exists through modern technology that used to exist from communities. So the resistance to doing Wi-Fi in the stores, call someone, get some help, figure out how you can offer Wi-Fi in because in the future as we go forward, we'll be showing you also uh, systems that will allow you to better track your customers, welcome your customers. The kiosk that we're working on um, that you see in, in one of the booths there, when you walk into the store, it's gonna be motion sensitive and it'll pick up that, oh, okay, this person has been into the store and has logged on to your Wi-Fi and it'll say, welcome Mrs. Jones, you know, the last time you were in, you got this, how about this? We can give them tailored offers when they walk into the store just because they've signed on to your Wi-Fi. So those are the kinds of things that if you start putting that into place now, by next year when we're standing here, we'll be able to help you take that even to another level. So that to me is another priority for uh, the coming year.